just a couple of things I want to talk about first. So, um, is that uh, when you uh, do your David Austin Rose, so with your David Austin Rose, you know, this is we made in class, all right? But you can make a larger version. So this one, I just added two more layers with the largest size cutter. You know, so like if you were doing a wedding cake and you wanted, or a bridal bouquet, or you wanted some bigger flowers. So this has just got, in, instead of one of the largest size, I just put two on this. It's just because this was a hands-on class, it's just the time it would take to do those extra two petals. But that is something you can um, obviously do. You know, if you make another one, um, you could do obviously with, just to show you that, that will make obviously a fuller, a fuller flower. All right? Now, um, with the David Austin Rose, so first thing we're going to do is going to just remove the sponge pieces. Now, if you're doing a sugar one, just do that carefully. And generally, when I remove the sponge pieces, I would just use regular tweezers for that, all right? But just as I said, just be a little bit careful, uh, because obviously the difference between your sugar and your air drying clay is that the air drying clay is not as, uh, you know, fragile, it's very durable. So remove those and keep those in a little container because you'll see me use these in other projects coming up and uh, obviously just I generally just keep like a little plastic container um, or a bag with little sponge pieces in. And just remember those sponge pieces, you know, you can find like in some of the supermarkets, grocery stores, speak to the produce manager. They often have sponge pieces. Uh, wrap dragon fruits and some of the tropical fruits in but also you can buy a baby sponge like if you go to like a dollar or pound store you just cut that up uh, packing foam a lot of times when you order stuff electrical things you get packing foam so just keep all of that stuff because it's always really really handy and um, so that's that's going to be your removed just sponge pieces so we're going to start off um, on the uh, sheet here going to start off with a calyx so we're going to add two extra 20 gauge wires to the bud using half width light green floral tape or remember you know with certain colors you might use other colors so we're going to take the wires going to add those two here and then i'm going to then take my floral tape and the reason why we're doing this, this is just done for not need, especially like the air drying clay because it's very lightweight, but even those of you making a sugar one, obviously uh, a sugar bud is fine on a 20 gauge wire, but we're doing this um, for a more of a cosmetic reason. So it actually makes the stem look naturally. So it's more of an aesthetic thing than the actual need for strength. Because when you're doing like a specimen rose, you want it to make as natural as possible. So proportion of stems, we do this quite a lot with certain projects, okay? Um, so you'll add the wires to the to that and I'm going to show you the calyx all right now the calyx is going to today we're going to do the calyx in two tones so the calyx was um, obviously wasn't didn't come out in the original um, in the original molds all right so in the original in book one um, the rose in here was done with using a just a regular calyx cutter all right and this is actually the uh, PME extra extra large size. So this is about uh, two inches, about 50 centimeters across cutter. Okay, and um, so this is the, um, as I said, the uh, the way I did that in the book. And uh, in the um, book one, obviously I did it in the same way. I used two tone paste. This was things in the book. Remember, all in gum paste. And all of my videos on the Flower Pro videos those are all uh, gum paste or sugar all right obviously with this club you know like i'm working with air drying clay today i did the daffodil next monday the hibiscus is in sugar so i'm mixing up a little bit remember you can work in either medium but um so um if you've got a if you don't have the mold and you've got the cutter then you're just going to follow the same techniques but you're just going to cut it out and i'll explain about the next step there as well all right now when you are um so when we're doing the calyx, all right, if you're using a pasta machine, all right, you can do it as it's written in the instructions. So that is to take 16 grams or 4.5 grams of air drying clay in both, no, that's a number 12 size in green and in white, all right? So you're gonna take a, so this is a number 12 in uh, white, which is going to be the, in your directions for the paste, that is the four point, that is the uh, number six, grams on number 12 white or as I said in air drying clay 4.5 grams on number 12 white all right so you're going to use that and then you want from your green you have left from your leaves okay you're going to take a comparable amount so that is going to give you your your two pieces so if you're using a pasta machine you're going to do this like this all right if you're not using a pasta machine and you're going to do this freehand what you're going to do is you're going to break each of these into two balls because what you'll do is I'll show you this in a next you're going to do the calyxes separately all right but anyway so you're going to take your paste here so if obviously with your sugar you're going to put a little bit of shortening fat into there to condition that and this is going to be my green 
Okay. And then what you're going to do here is you're going to condition and roll into a soft, flatten and repeat with the white. It's just going to roll that into a little sausage and you're going to flatten it. Okay. Like that. All right. It's going to flatten your two sausages. And then on the, um, so then for the sugar, you're going to rub vegetable shortening over the green and place the white on top. So if this is the sugar one, you take some vegetable shortening, you're going to rub it all over the surface. And what that's going to do is going to bond the two pieces together. Here with the air drying clay, we don't have to do that because it will obviously stick to itself. All right. But I said the shortening, so you sandwich this together. Now this technique we use for lots of different things. We use this for when I'm doing, um, as I said, calyxes, but I also use this. And you can also use this, it's beautiful to do use for the petals as well. So like for example, let's say this was burgundy and this was cream. When you then cut out your blossom, you could cut it out so that the burgundy would be towards you and then the underneath part, so when you look into the rose like this, this would be burgundy and then the underneath of the petals would be a, like a creamy color. So you can use this technique for roses as well. Like when I do um, like uh, the Japanese magnolia, the tulip tree magnolia, I use like a pinky plum color and then white. So when you cut the magnolia leaves, uh, petals, the petals would be the plum color on the outside and white on the inside. All right, so anyway, so you're going to roll this out. So you need to roll this out so it's just a little bit wider than the medium cavity. All right, it's just a little bit wider than the cavity. And if you're using the cutter, obviously, just, just a little bit wider than your cutter, because obviously these are both the same. And then, um, so just going to roll that out just a little bit. All right, and then, and you can do this as well for the, if you don't have a pasta machine, but you might find it easier to do this, um, as I said, as uh, two separate pieces. So remember, just a little tips, remember, in, when you're putting it in your plastic flap, when you're using the air drying clay, always put it towards the bottom, because when it goes through, the, it's going to stretch it. And then we're going to then, um, once we've done that, we're going to roll out to the width of the medium cutter, then feed through the pasta machine on number four setting. So we're actually going to do both the air drying clay and the sugar on number four. So I'll go through on number two first and then on number four, okay? So number two and then number four. So you see how you're going to get your, your paste like this, all right? Now you're going to just then you can use your, okay, so just something to, just going to cut this, you can use your cutting wheel. Something like this. But you see how this, this, is, this gives you the two-tone effect, you see? All right. And you can use this like when I make ribbon loops. Sometimes on cake I do this with half gum paste and half um, uh, fondant or sugar paste. And uh, you can make bow loops. You could have like white on the inside or black on the inside and hot pink on the outside. So it's a very, very easy technique to do. Now you're going to use um, either your cutter or the mold, all right? And I'm going to show you both because I know some of you don't have the calyx mold, all right? So when we do the calyx mold, we're going to put a little bit of vegetable fat shortening into the inside of the cavity, all right? And then what we're going to do is you're going and rub lightly inside the calyx with, and then the white side towards you, pressing the mold with a cosmetic sponge. On the videos for this, I show actually doing this also with a calyx, um, with a uh, round cutter. You can cut out with a round cutter as well. But you want the, the white side up, okay, and then you're just going to press this into the, into here. It's a little bit humid in here, so I'm just going to, there we go. I'm just going to press this into the, because you want the white side on the inside of the all right, it's so going to press this in with your cosmetic sponge like this. All right, so it's going to go into the calyx. And then you're going to, um, once we've done that, press into the end with a Dresden tool. So with your Dresden tool, you're just going to just press into the end of this. So you're just going to just press into the end like this. This just makes sure it anchors in. And the reason why we use the vegetable fat or shortening into here, even on the sugar one, because this is very shallow, like a pie, like lining a pie crust with pastry. Now we're going to use your little scraper, um, or as a, you can use the blue scraper, I'm using the, here the flexi scraper, and just going to use a skimming action. All right, so you're going to come, when you do this, you're going to come from the center, going to just skim to the outside here. And um, if you find it, you know, you, you want to make sure that it stays stuck onto the shortening because then that way, but you see you work from the inside, but you're going to use this gentle skimming action. All right, and then you're going to just do the next one. Here, yeah, like so. Okay. And then you're going to just repress this back in with the cosmetic sponge. And that's just going to clean off the um, edges there, okay? Just if it moves a little bit, just, just trim that off, okay? 
it on like so. Now this piece you have left, all right, once you finish the project, that will just become like a pale green. And of course you just could use that for something you want a pale green. It's going to flex this out of the mold, okay? It's going to take this out of the mold. So this is going to give you your, your head and your legs, all right? So it's going to give you the sort of feathering on the head and legs. And you're also going to get this slight concave shape. So this really does just eliminate the step of stretching it and then feathering the head and legs. But I'm going to show you, as I said in this, I'm going to show you both techniques. So if you're using a cutter, you can uh, do that. And then um, once we've done that, uh, I'm going to remove and then uh, place on cosmetic sponge with whole brush egg wide or glue up length of calyx attached to two non serrated sections, the arms then the head and legs peel back slightly. So you're going to place this. So this one I'm going to put on first of all onto the uh, onto the bud, all right? So you're gonna put your glue all the way down this, all right? So you're gonna put your glue all the way down the center. So pretty much in the whole line of this. Okay, and then you're gonna take your bud. Now remember, I've got the two extra wires added to this. You'd always do that before the calyx goes on. And then you're gonna thread this down through the middle here. Doesn't matter where this sits in relation to the, and then you're gonna put on the two sections that are like the two arms, all right? So if you think of this as a figure, all right, we have the head and you have the legs and you have the arms. You put the two arms on first, all right, and then you're going to put on the head and on the legs here like that because they're actually going to slightly overlap on the uh, calyx, all right? And that's sort of how you do your calyx there. And then you're going to peel back very slightly, all right? So just, no, just peel that back just a little tiny bit so you can sort of see the white on the inside, okay? But this is pretty much a fitted calyx on the, uh, on the, um, on here like that, all right? And that will be on your um, bud. And then, um, so then I'm going to just show you the, the, the um, just show you if you're doing it with a cutter, all right? Which of course is on the videos, so, but I'm just obviously just showing you both techniques. So when you do it with the cutter, all right, you just would follow. If you have book one, uh, book uh, one, you're just following directions there. So you're just going to use your cutter. Just going to press your cutter on the top. Going to peel away your excess paste, okay? And remember, this paste is said here. Um, you just literally, once you've finished all of your calyxes, you just mix this together, and then you then, that makes pale green. So, of course, you know, you could add some blue and gray to that and turn it into like a eucalyptus color. Uh, you can use this for pale green. So like when we do um, next month, when we do the sweet peas, um, remember sweet peas, you're going to be doing the flower and the leaves. So again, you can make the leaves, usually you're doing a paler green. So you could actually keep this, just wrap it up really well in another bag, keep it in a plastic container. But if you're doing the, um, if you're doing the, uh, the flower there, you're going to use the, sorry, I need to get my little pad. So if you're doing the calyx without the mold, all right, this is, so really, as I said, what the mold does, it just eliminates a couple of steps, okay? So you're going to take this off. So you're just going to make the calyx just a little bit longer. Sorry, I'm just coming, just because I've got the, obviously, everybody's questions there. It's just going to make the calyx just a little tiny bit longer, all right? It's just going to make this a little bit longer. But as I said, this is basically following directions in the, in book one, okay, which a lot of you have as well. Okay, and then you're going to take some scissors. So this is where I use like the spring action scissors. All right, and with your spring action scissors, you're going to make some cuts into here. Just going to make some little cuts into the head and then into the two legs. Okay. So we're just going to make some little cuts in the head and on the two legs. All right. As I said, this is the humid, so the air drying clay is a little sticky, so I'm just going to just use a little bit of cornstarch. Now, some air drying clay also use baby talc, so they use like just talcum powder, which is also you can be used. And then what you do there is you're just going to just like press in with your Dresden tool um, onto there just to give you the slight hollow in because the, you need that slight concave which the mold gives you, all right? So that's just as I said, an alternative to um, if you're doing the, the calyx in that, in that method. Um, and then when we put this onto the, on the open rows, only put the egg white or glue two thirds of the way up the base of the calyx and peel back slightly. All right, so it's gonna go about two thirds of the way up. All right, so about two thirds of the way up 
and then on your flour, which we don't have to add any, because remember on the flour we had the original 524 gauge wires, then the 18 gauge wires. So this has got quite a sturdy stem and it's naturally thicker. Okay. And then here, we just want to make sure that when you position this, all right, when you position it, you position it so that the calyx is going to go down the middle of each of the sections, all right? And then you see then what you're going to do is just going to just press this on, press this on like this. I'm going to take this off, all right? And then you're just going to just curl this back, all right? So you just want to just curl this back because this is going to give you the, this will give you the calyx. And um, so you're just going to curl this back here. And so that's going to give you the, the, so the calyx will curl back a little bit on there, okay? All right, and that's how you would do the, um, on the, um, on the uh, flower, uh, the main flower. Now, if you're wanting to do the calyx separately, all right, if you don't have a pasta machine, then what you want to do is you're just going to take your number 12 of green, number 12 of white, and then just split them in half, all right? So this is not a number six, because obviously it's, a, but it's half of a number 12 ball. So if you just flatten that out like that, you flatten that out like that, and again just put a little bit of, um, obviously with sugar, a little bit of shortening vegetable fat onto here, and then you're going to put the white on top, you're going to pinch them together, and then you're going to roll this out. So then all you're going to do is, if you're doing the air drying clay or the sugar one, just roll this out so it's basically about the size of the, of the cutter or the mold, all right? And then you see then that will give you so you can just do the two of those separately, all right? So anyway, so that's the, um, that's the calyx, all right? And once you've got the calyx on, um, we're going to, so remember, just take all of that, that light green, that mixed paste, all right? And that's going to end up being, as I said, just like a pale, a pale green, like this. And then we're going to take the original green, which is the green, the original green we used, all right? We're going to use that for uh, the ovary. Now your ovary, all right, so your ovary is um, you're going to press paste into the medium ovary mold and skim off the excess. So when you make the ovary, so this is actually about a number six size, but when I showed this on the videos, you can literally just take some paste out, gain just a little tiny bit of vegetable shortening. All right, so all you're going to do then is just literally just fill the mold up and then just skim off the top, all right? So you're going to just skim off the top there like so. Okay, so you're going to fill this up, and with your companion tool, come in a little bit tighter, Scott. With your companion tool there, you're going to then just going to take that and just drill that through the middle. Okay, just going to pop that out. So you're going to have this little hole through the middle there. You're just going to make a little hole through the center. Okay, and then you're going to take this, you're going to slide this up the wire. All right, you're going to slide this up the wire. So you see it's got that little flat cap on it. And just put a little bit of glue um, just to make sure that it sort of sticks. You don't need a lot, but obviously a little bit of egg white goes on that, on the flat part of it here. Okay, and you're going to bring this up, you're going to mold this around the bottom. And then using your companion tool, you're going to just blend the two together like that. And remember, as I showed you in the... Um, when I showed you on the, the videos with the air drying clay, the other difference is there is that if you wanted to, get a little bit of water, you could also take just a little bit of, like for example, a little bit of water here, and see just using a little bit of water, you can actually just sort of blend that with water. Now you can't do this with sugar, but you see how what it will actually do is a little bit of water there can actually be used so you get a completely invisible uh, seam, you see? I'm just going to mold that around, and that's going to give you your ovary. So your ovary is your reproductive part on the base of the rose. So when the rose dies, you know, naturally all of the seeds go into there. But uh, if you were, so if you're using your, so I said, this is actually about a number, this is like a number six size if you were using this on your, on your size guide, okay? Where can they get a companion? Well, companion tool comes with the, you know, in the club we have this available. Um, it comes with the size guide and uh, uh, the little scraper. Uh, we also get this as a free gift with the um, Ultimate Filler Flowers. And any of you that are in the US, we sell these separately. 
We also sell it with the little mini pad as well. And we do have the pads have arrived in the UK, so we'll be getting those on to the, the, car, the uh, shopping um, shop next week, okay? Yes, yes, from Katie Sue, the companion tools, yeah. So, but as I said, we have this, if you're in the US, we have this on its own or with the little pad, okay? Um, now, so as I said, so you do another one, but if you're doing it with just the, if you're doing it without the, um, with, with no, no mold, if you don't have the calyx mold, all right, what you can do there is you can just take this and just slide this up the, the wire like this. So this is just gonna be your number six size ball, okay? And again, just put a little bit of glue on the top there so the mold just helps to give you that um, sort of correct shape. We're just gonna mold this on, okay? Just gonna mold this on for your little calyx. And as I say, just gonna blend this together. So just with the sugar one, of course, don't use the water on it, but as I said, on the air drying clay, that's the nice thing about the air drying clay. A little bit of the sugar on there, the, uh, the water on there, okay? And that would be your um, little ovary, okay? So that's the little ovary um, completed. All right, so so do we have anybody actually, um, are the companion tools going to be sold in the UK? Yes, Debbie, the companion tool is available, um, as I said, it's on the club. If you go to the club shop, uh, we do have that um, in the portal. You know, there's obviously the shop, and you'll see, as I said, we have it, have it available. Uh, we do have them available um, separately as well. I think you just need to send it uh, to uh, members at Katie Sue. We can do them. Um, so in the UK, we cannot buy the tool with the pad. Um, we have the pads. The pads will be coming and we'll be putting probably those with the pad. In the US, we sell the pad because this is something I manufacture. We sell the pad and the little stick, but we will have those. They'll be available next week on, on the shop, okay? Um, and um, so, but we'll have the little mini pads on there as well because that's really convenient. But the companion tool comes with the um, comes with the um, obviously uh, ultimate filler flower as well. So when you buy the ultimate filler flower, it comes with that. Um, now, first of all, uh, have we? Um, are anybody? Is anybody actually working? I know a couple of you posted that you were busy at work and things. And um, yeah, the tool should be on. It should be on. Um, it's under special um, product, under special merchandise. I think. Can somebody help me with looking at that? I think it's just called special merchandise. So we have it with the size guide and then the uh, stick little companion tool and the mini flexi scraper. All right, and as I said, then we will have, as I said, the little mini scraper as well. But as I said, you can also, if you ever have any questions, just send uh, an email to members at katiesue.com uh, because uh, Katie will obviously love the Katie. What's that? Just look at the camera. Okay. Um, so um, as a Katie will um, obviously, and then a couple of things also just is so um, obviously we have a couple of people that are working, you know, making the calyx. So I'm just gonna just uh, talk about a couple of things. So first of all, um, we have obviously a few people had um, messaged me to say that they were waiting still to get their clay and uh, some of the molds for, and so they wanted to do the citrus. So we are gonna actually extend the citrus, the fun competition until next Thursday, all right? So we're actually gonna continue that for another week. And then the other thing is a couple of you had asked that just recently joined about the, the duo with the uh, texture mat, the cross stitch mat, and then also the, uh, yes, this is on Members Katie Sue, it's the prize, uh, size guide, companion tool, and scraper package, okay, bundle. Um, but also some of you had asked about the, uh, the citrus, the spice and the textured uh, cross stitch mat so we have put those back on we have also made a decision originally we were going to put some of those things on just for a limited amount of time but because we will be having members join in like pretty much every day um, we're just going to keep things on them permanently so when things are added like special things especially when i'm using other products from say kerry griffiths or from the katie sue line we will bring those into the shop and then um you'll be able to, but as I said, they'll be on there permanently. All right, so you should be able to. But as I said, if you ever have any questions about anything, obviously you can just post it on the platform. Um, but as I said, Katie, uh, uh, Katie who works for Katie Sue Designs, a bit confusing. All right, but Katie is obviously usually takes care of uh, the membership and she'll take care of sort of if you have any questions about, you know, can't find something or whatever. Um, so obviously just let, let Katie know that. And um, just while um, everybody's, um, as I said, because we've got some, so do we have some people working? Are some of you uh, still working? So Jacqueline's having issues with the internet dropping. It's, it's fine here. I mean, we've got a strong signal here, so it's probably just in your area. It's just, as I said, because a lot of people are still 
families, you have mom and dad and all the kids on a device, it's sort of obviously uh, causing, as I said, problems in certain areas. And uh, we finally have got the cables because we've been waiting like for a month. Uh, we have a new, um, really fun um, new uh, sort of software we're going to be using in the lives and things, but uh, will enable us to have split screen and other things like that. But we've been waiting for cables. Um, Amazon lost the first ones that took 13 days to get here and then they lost them. And then we ordered some more, which were meant to be here in two days of normally with Prime and it took nine days. So finally we have got everything here. So uh, we're hopefully going to be rolling that out week um, sometime to uh, to obviously to be able to say we'll be able to do split screen and lots of lots of fun things and things as well and uh, so Fiona's finished okay well that's good very quick Fiona sorry so um, I'm gonna then move on to show you the thorns all right so the thorns are done in the same color as the calyx not the lighter color this is just like the paler green and you see how like you get this little almost like condensation in there it's just the moisture from the from the air drying clay um, and as I said, remember with the air drying clay, if you find it's a little bit wet, you can just leave it out for a couple of minutes. But don't leave it out too long because remember it will actually affect it in respect that it's going to, uh, will end up with um, it getting dry and stuff. But remember you can add water to it as well. So we're going to do the thorns. So on the thorns, we're going to rub a little vegetable shortening in the thorn cavities. So if you don't have these, all right, if you don't have the cone and thorn mold, because I know some of you are new to all of this, but, uh, you know, obviously, everybody has to start somewhere. This is a little bit like a goal for other hobbies. But the nice thing about this um, is the fact that it can, you know, you can generate a lot of money from this. If you make air drying clay flowers to sell or you're using these on a wedding cake in sugar, you can generate a lot of money from your investment. You know, unlike people who play golf, unless you're doing it on a professional level, you spend a lot of money, but it doesn't really make you any money. But this is a good investment, but I realize some of you, um, so literally, as I said, you just paste in there, and then you're just going to literally just use your little scraper, all right, and you're going to just scrape away the excess paste. Remember, when, um, you know, before I started, before we had the Flower Pro scraper, this is the little uh, one I use. So if you have this one, you know, this is also great as well. So this is the one I use on a lot of the videos, um, and as I said, the Flower Pro one has got the same nice thin, thin edge on that. So anyway, so this is going to be a little thorn, and if you don't have, if you don't have thorn mold, all right, so what you can do there is you can actually take, like, just a little ball of paste, like, you know, number three, number four size, and just sort of make it into just like a little thorn shape. I mean, it's quite a basic shape, but you can make it into like a little thorn shape as well, all right? But this just gives a, it really just gives a nice little, like, to the, to the rose. Now, when we do this on the bud, all right, we're going to take our bud here, and you're going to bend your bud like a banana shape. So just use your fingers. So you're going to bend about half of it like a banana shape, and then half of it, so half of the wire is going to be straight, and then half will have this almost like banana shape to it, okay? And you're going to take the, now when you take the, these out of the mold, you're going to see where the square part is closest to the cone. You're just going to use your little companion tool, and you're going to pop it out with the pointed end of the companion tool. So where the square part is here, I see how I'm just using my companion tool. Just pop this in and pop it out like that. So you've got a smaller thorn and a longer thorn. Now, we're gonna use, um, on the, on the um, air drying clay one, we're gonna put a little bit of glue. Now you're gonna put this about, um, so this is like half of your banana. This is gonna, these two thorns are gonna sit in the top half of your banana, so the first quarter here. So you're just going to just take your little thorn here. Just going to just blend that on with a little bit of glue. Give that shape. All right, it's going to have your little thorn is going to go onto there. And I'm going to have another one is going to go onto here like this. All right. But as I said, these will give you your two thorns onto your onto your rose. Now they look a little strange at the moment because the color wise, and especially working with the air drying clay because it's more of a bright green, but we're going to be dusting these in a little bit, okay? Now, um, if you watch the sugar version, all right, if you're doing this with sugar, when you're with sugar, what you do is you use, you take a little bit of your paste, so this is, if this was your gum paste, your bar paste, just take a little bit of paste like this, all right, you just need a little tiny, tiny bit, and then what you'll do is you'll take your Dresden tool, so you push your gum paste, your flower modeling paste onto that, dip it into your egg white, and then you're just going to just blend this egg white into here to make like a thick glue, 
because straight egg white is not strong enough. It doesn't have the structural strength, okay? And then the other uh, product you can use for that, which I talked about on the videos, this is a product I use called Superbond, okay? And Superbond is a product that I use on some of my videos. It's a Nicholas Lodge product. Um, and again, we, we are working to get some of these edibles available in the UK. Um, if you watch my wafer paper um, demonstration the other day on making the poppies, this is what I use the product going to go ahead um, and uh, but as I said it's something I do usually bring over to Cake International obviously now we have some of the other tools the scrapers and things like that but as I said we are working on um, uh, trying to get that obviously manufactured in the UK as well all right it just uh, you know um, with obviously everybody on lockdown and things like that and companies not really sort of working at a hundred percent speed it's a little bit um, as I said uh, difficult to get things but once thingy um, should we should be good so those are your thorns, all right? So you just now you could um, usually when I teach the rows, like when I teach my sugar rows like this in my classes, we normally just put two thorns on the um, on the rose bud. Um, if you wanted to, when you finish your whole project, all right. So obviously this is the air drying clay one. What you could do is you could then go in and you could put also thorns on the main stem as well and then let them dry a little bit then color them. The reason why we can't do that now is when we put everything together is obviously the thorns would just be, have to be broken off to put everything together. So, um, so now we're going to put the leaves. So when we do the leaves we're going to uh, my super brown is brown. If, if it's just a little bit old it will be fine all right so it would be perfectly okay Kathy. Um, you know, just as I said, um, it's just like a little bit like certain other things, like fondant gets a little bit yellowy, but it still will be fine to use, okay? But uh, so you're gonna take your, um, on your um, wire, so you're gonna come down about two and a half centimeters. Remember, start at an angle, all right? So, you know, in the Q&A, like Karen was a little bit, Karen Seal, one of our design team members, a little bit tape challenge, but just go at an angle when you're taping. And remember, go around, stretch your tape first. So that's going to, as I said, and then you're just gonna slide this up to the bottom of the leaf. And you're going to come down. All right, it's going to come down here. So when we put the leaves together, we're going to come down with the, um, the leaves. So we're going to tape a leader leaf, come down about four centimeters, about one and a half inches. So you're going to come down about four centimeters um, on there. Because we're obviously doing large leaves, so we need to come down about four centimeter, about one and a half inches. Then you're going to take then the other leaves you can use your um, tweezers or you can use pliers there, but you're gonna bend one to the right and one to the left. So remember, we're gonna hold these. So now roses are one of the very few leaves that usually I would always recommend using green wire on, all right? Because most other leaves, all right, we're normally gonna tape the stem, but when we do roses, because the rose leaf, the side leaves, are going to just be bent at an angle. We don't tape these two side leaves or the four side leaves if you're doing a five configuration. You always wanna usually have, so remember this is like 26 gauge wire. So wires you generally would wanna have green and white, but as I said, generally speaking, but if you only had white wire, you could just tape the base of those side leaves. So put those in position. Now also remember little tips, all right? When you're doing the side leaves, if like for example, you could see, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pull that out a little bit. So you see, like, if you could see that wire, you can see the wire here, all right? You can see that wire there. So all you do then is you just find the, where the wire is, and see, and then you just pull, you just pull that wire, and what that's gonna do is gonna pull it in nice and tight, you see? So that's gonna basically pull the, pull the leaves in nice and tight there. And then you're going to just tape down. All right, so once you tape down, so this is going to give you a grouping of leaves. Now remember, of course, you can do a three leaf, five leaf configuration. Within the four cutters, there are four different combo, uh, there are five different combo, seven, sorry, there's seven combinations you can do. You can do three large leaves, three medium, uh, three extra large, three large, three medium, three small, or you could do three extra large and two large. You could do three large and two medium, three medium, two small, or three, so basically you can have those seven different configurations, all right? But uh, we're just gonna do, um, obviously, just the three single leaves. But if you were making a couple of roses, you can make some more leaves as well, uh, maybe over the weekend or um, things like that. So those are the leaves uh, put together. So that's all the making part, and then I'm um, going to, as I said, now 
move on to show you just some finishing touches and some coloring techniques. Everybody doing okay? So, yep. So. Now just remember when, you know, when you're dusting, you only want to just your work surface and uh, you know, use a napkin or paper towel just to work on a piece of kitchen paper. Okay, so um, on the finishing touches, um, we've got here dust darker color on petal edges using flat brush. And uh, so what I've done is I've mixed up, I've used actually a mango and pink color. So I've made this sort of coral color. Um, as I said when we finished up class on Monday, so the thing is, is that uh, if, you, um, if you want to just try out a little bit of the color, if you have an extra petal, well, the other thing is, is just try out a little bit of the color just on, like, say, the back of the petal where it's not going to really notice. Now, if the color is too strong, just take a little bit of cornflour. You know, of course, you don't need a lot of color, but you just can add a little bit of cornflour, cornstarch to the color, and that will make it a little bit paler, okay? But so you're just going to put a little bit of this color, but I just, you know, played around with this color. So I've made it almost a bit like a sort of a salmon pink color. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a flat brush. Now with my flat brush, you see I'm brushing from the source. So you see how you're going to get this darker color just around your edge of your petals here. And so you're just going to continue. Yeah, the little tip about pulling the tape, you know, those are things that, you know, it just sort of all those little things just make life a little bit easier. But remember, everybody is a little bit challenged when they first start tape. Um, you know, as I talk to my students when they come to classes or like students at the French pastry school, everybody's a little tape challenged. So I just have this slight contrast. You know, I don't want a lot of color on this particular type of rose, but just going to just put the colors around. So I said, I'm, you know, excited to see everybody. Um, obviously, some of you already posted, like the, you know, the first stage. Like Susan, a couple of you have posted. You've got your first stage ready. So I want to sort of see your roses all finished. So you're going to do that on the back, and then you're going to bring that color. So just remember, don't load too much color on your brush. You're going to then bring this color. So this color is going to. So really, what you're almost doing is you're the middle color to your dust because. You want the color really, almost that color in the center to be the sort of color on the pale petals. And you see that makes a huge difference in integrating the colors together because if you didn't, the type of rose has those sort of two shaded petals, but you have this darker. And then you can just put a little bit of that color over here as well. So just gonna just, just remember brush from the source away from the source. All right, so it's gonna give you that, that sort of color on the bud. Just be careful, everybody, working with your sugar ones. We don't want drama, so just uh, be a little bit careful. And on your bud, you're going to put your color onto the tip of your bud as well. You see, in a lot of my classes, I would then, you know, use a little label marker or if you use a little pot like this, just write on the lid with a Sharpie and just put, you know, this is for like the... Um, Abraham Derby rose color, you know, because if you're doing custom colors, so you want to, yeah, so is the biggest size of the leaf always, always the top? Yes, that, that's true. But if you were doing um, a group of leaves, so, you know, like in book one, if you actually look in book one here, but you'll see here, like, see this shows like three of the extra large and then two large, all right? This shows three large and two medium, you see? So when you're doing the leaves, um, you, you're going to use those combinations. But you can see here, like this is what we actually are making in the class. This is three extra large, but here you see that's three large and two medium. And then you could do three medium and two small, but you could have three extra large, three large, three medium or three small, and then three large, two medium, or three medium and two small. So you've got, and, and also you could do like three la extra large and two large. So there's actually, as I said, seven different configurations on your leaves. So, of course, you could make a lot of leaves, you know, so when I'm sometimes, I mean, I've done wedding cakes where I've made 70 leaves, 70 rose leaves for the arrangement of uh, roses. And on the, actually on the um, front of book one, so on this, this uh, spray here, I actually used all the seven different configurations of leaves, okay? So to, you know, because obviously when you come down the end of the bouquet, you want like larger, larger leaf clusters. So anyway, so I've got the, um, so I've done the coral color. Now you can just put that obviously back in the bag. Now then you need, um, so then we need a, a very, um, a very pale 
very light green with round brush in the center. And then, so what I'm going to do here, this is like a light apple. So this is a color I use on hydrangeas and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a round brush here and going to put a little bit of this just on because I don't need a lot of this color. And I'm just going to add just a little tiny bit of corn flour to this. So a lot of times I would just mix this up as I need it. So I'm just going to make this really, really pale, limey color, okay? But this is also, as I explained, like if you don't have, you can also, to achieve this color, if you don't have a sort of a limey green, just use like a little bit of yellow and green dust. And then you see then you can take this very pale green and then you're going to use a round brush and we're just going to pounce that in the middle. So we're using the pouncing technique like we use in stenciling. Be this, just this sort of paler green. So you're just going to just dust that into the middle here. So just to get this soft. You don't, you don't want it to have like a big green blob in the middle here. Okay. So you're just going to put this really just into there. And then you can use a angled brush. So I'm going to just use a flat brush, an angled brush. And I'm going to put some of this green onto the now, if you, if you don't find that strong enough on the pedals, you can just use it like full strength. You know, it's just a question of like, it's just a little bit like makeup techniques. I mean, you know, you try things out and it's just a question of just blending the color. So again, we're just going to take this color. I'm just going to just put this up to the, so this is going to just come up the back of the flower here. So you're going to have just this soft green color onto there. And then on your bud, you're going to do that green color. So you're just going to put a little bit of the green color. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to go in like between my calyx here with that, just that soft, that green color, okay? You could also use the prairie green as well. And remember, of course, if you have a stronger colored rose, you could use a stronger color on there. I'm just going to get rid of that. And, um, but you know, in each of the, in each of the lessons, the episodes, like, you know, for example, on Monday, you know, on the hibiscus, again, you're going to see some sort of how to do like that stripe effect and how to build up intensity of color on petals. Because like, you know, this is the hibiscus I'll be teaching you on Monday, but you see how you get that beautiful sort of color. So we're using there like a flat brush and then we're bringing, cutting in with the color. Um, so, you know, it's, it's all based on, um, as I said, different techniques. And the more experience you have with the flowers, you know, the easier you're going to find that. Now we're going to, um, so that's going to be on the, on there and then darker green used on the leaves in a stripe down the calyx. So what we're going to do, this is going to be the color I'm going to use on the leaves, which is like a foliage green. So we're also going to put a little bit of that color on the calyx. So we're going to use the, and of course I've just done this and in the air drying clay, you can pretty much as I said, do this straight away when you're doing, so you're going to use just like a stripe of that green down the middle of each of the calyxes a little bit around here and we're also going to put that color so on the thorns there it says dust the green used on the leaves on the thorn base and rose color on the thorn tips so I'm also going to use just a little bit of that foliage green onto this stem and of course I've just put these um, leaves on you know the thorns on here but I'm going to dust the see what I'm doing here is I'm dusting the base of the thorn now with the sugar one you generally want to let this dry a little bit all right so you may want to let that dry till later on this evening or even tomorrow um, once you get everything dry. But so you see how I've got the darker green on here and you can also on the floral tape that takes the color very well. All right. And then we're also going to put a little on the edge of the thorn. We're going to use a little bit of the coral color. So whatever color you use on your rose, because we're also going to do this on the, I'm also going to put a little tiny bit of that onto the tip of the thorn as well. This is the way I balance color. So, you know, when I showed my red rose in my classes, I use red here. So whatever color you use on your petals, you use there on your thorns. So that will be the coloring onto the, the flowers. And then on the leaves, of course, you can put gloves on for this as well. So we're just literally going to just put the foliage green. It's going to go all over the leaves. So this is going to be my darker a little bit of a darker green color. And 
And then if you looked in the, if you've looked on the Facebook page today, I think it was Linda, one of our um, members, she found a really cool coloring chart, which actually I didn't know existed. I've seen one for like um, Sculpey, a uh, uh, Fimo, but it's actually a coloring chart that uh, it was designed by, you know, Hardy Clay. So it actually has all these different, it's like a color chart where it actually shows you all of these different um, colors you can achieve using like, um, it has like a little, almost a little bit like the concept I use of the size guide, but it's like a little mold of um, different size pieces, part of this and three parts of this. Looks really uh, good, I need to get one of those. But, um, so you're gonna do this color all over, and then we're gonna take a little bit of that accent color. So again, whatever color you use on your rows. Now, um, the reason why I do this, this is just a way of balancing color, and I've talked about this in some of my Katie Sue classes, my Flabro classes, but also on some of my lives and things as well. It's a way of balancing color, and when you're doing um, roses, when you actually look at a rose outside, when a rose is sort of semi-reflective, it almost is a little bit like it's going to reflect the color of the rose in like a photograph or to the eye. So just a little trick I always use, whatever color I've used on my rose, I use the same color on my leaves, okay? And I'm just gonna put just a little bit of this, almost like coral color, uh, onto my, so you see how they're just gonna go on the base of the leaves, so you do that sort of just front and back. Now the only time that I would use sometimes a different color would be like let's say I was doing a really, really pale pink rose and I was taking some pink dust but I was making, I was adding cornstarch, corn flour to it to make it a lot paler. I would use the full strength version on the leaves. Like uh, in my, um, I teach a sugar rose class, my uh, Renshaw Academy class. So the students use American Beauty which is one of my pink colors. But when we do the, on the flower, we're actually using a slightly lighter American Beauty. So what we do there is we use the slightly lighter American Beauty on the rose, but when we do the rose leaves, we use full strength. And then you see, so then you're gonna go, and you just put like just a little hint of that color just here and there, but that could be red, it could be burgundy, whatever color you've used on your rose petals, all right? Um, and then what that does is going to just sort of give you that nice, uh, nice look. Now with the, um, when you're using, um, obviously your sugar ones, all right, so with your sugar leaves, you're going to, uh, with once you've done your sugar leaves, you're going to then um, spray with edible lacquer or leaf glaze, all right, and um, so remember you, if you're doing your sugar one, if you're going to use the brush on glaze, you want to basically just slightly steam them to set them, or you can use your spray lacquer, and then if you're using, if you're doing the, um, so this is the spray lacquer, all right, so I've obviously shown this in some of the other classes, and then um, alternatively you're using, if you're doing the air drying clay, you can use, you know, this is like, for example, like a, um, a clear top coat, this is like a satin finish, but you can use like a spray varnish. Um, you want like a, generally like a satin or a eggshell type of finish or semi-gloss, all right, because uh, you don't want to make it them too, too and um, that one's got quite a powerful, I hadn't used that brand before, but it's got quite, it's quite a sort of a strong, it's not a light spray. But remember when you're spraying, especially if you're using, just, you know, just spray in a box, you know, like, or just go outside and spray is best. And um, then, as I said, you won't have, so this is just the, the clear, because you don't want to obviously get this in your, on your table or whatever, but you're just gonna, just gonna spray this over the top of this. There we go. All right, and that's going to just, will give you a nice, but as I said, you don't want to, as I said, do that in a, um, but also it's a little bit smelly, so it's something you might want to just go outside in the garden and do, okay? And um, so you're just gonna just obviously spray, spray the leaves. And then remember, for sugar ones, you're going to steam these, all right? So for sugar one, you're going to steam them, all right? And then, um, then one, and that will be it. And then for the air drying clay one, we're going to then use your unscented hairspray, all right? And again, you can just spray this into a box, but you're just gonna use your unscented hairspray if you haven't watched the first lesson, all right, that first lesson, obviously, talk this tent, the spray is going to actually set the, the color on the rose. And you may have seen there was a cake posted yesterday, a really beautiful, like, purse handbag cake with, obviously, like, some air drying clay flowers in pink. You know, and that's really where, as I said, this works so well because, you know, that could be it was on the cake board, so that could be taken by the customer and then obviously just kept. But, um, you know, so there are, as I said, a lot of advantages with the air drying clay. But for those of you that are crossing over from, 
you know, from sugar into air drying clay or from air drying clay into sugar. You know, it's like all of these things. It's just a different medium and it's just a little bit different. It's a different animal. But once you get to understand how it works, it really, as I said, is wonderful. Um, now, then all we're going to do finishing uh, touch wise, we're just going to just take your little rose here. I'm just going to get my, and you probably want to just wait for a little bit for that to, um, to obviously to dry. So it's quite strong smelling, obviously when you use the varnish, you know, like for any crafts and things like that. But the PME spray can also be used. The food, food glaze one can be used um, on the uh, air drying clay also, okay? And so then all we're going to do is just going to bring in your, so I'm just going to bring my rose up. So I'm going to bring my rose bud. So it's just going to come up from behind here. So you see, so you're going to have the natural, the rose and its bud. So you're just going to just bring this, this in here. This is just a nice way to, like, if you're just going to put this, like, into a vase, like a vase or whatever, you can just sort of bring that. And generally, you want the thorns a little bit, like, on their side. So you see how you can sort of see them then, not looking at them straight on. And, of course, you can bend that as you need to, just sort of bend that out a little bit. And um, so that looks a little bit strange from the side, but this is the sort of most attractive way to put them together. Because if you just have the rose stem uh, straight, it's not going to look as obviously attractive. Now, um, things I will mention in sugar ones, all right, that is why you want to bend your stem a little bit first so that you, because if you um, put the thorns onto the white straight wire and then you bend it afterwards, they're just going to ping, ping on. Hi, Christine. So Christine's watching. So Christine is who does all the fabulous job of the handouts and things for you. But uh, so here you can see how you've got your rows and you've got obviously the, the rows here. And then we're going to put the leaves in on here. So I'm going to bring my leaves. So I'm just going to bring the leaves. But how you put this together is really up to you because it depends on how you're going to use this. You know, you might want to put this into like a bud vase or you may want to use this on a, you know, wreath um, on the front door. So if you've got air drying clay one, you might want to. So you, of course, can just leave this as long as you want. You have your rose here. And here you have your, you know, your beautiful um, David Austin rose. So this one's just a little bit lighter. And uh, see the leaves here? I did them in a pale, slightly paler green um, on there. And um, so, you know, you've got your, um, as I said, your David Austin roses. And um, the sugar one um, is also there as well. So a really nice, um, you know, flower. And just remember that family, you know, come in many, many colors. And there are lots of, um, you know, varieties and styles of like English style. And other um, projects, we're going to be doing the ones like, a, like the ones with the stamens in the middle. So like the English uh, style rose, like I do one called Harrison's Yellow, which has got like exposed stamens in the middle of it. So the plan is we're going to be doing some of those different projects. Um, as well um, in some of the other uh, lessons. So I just want to talk a little bit about a um, couple of things. So can we bring the camera in, Scott? Thank you. So we do have um, a downloadable certificate for you. So, um, and uh, we trust that, you know, if you download this, so you can just fill this in with the date. But as I said, if you, um, so you can download this. And for each of the hands-on virtual classes, we will be doing these, so like the Sweet Pea next month and things. Uh, and we'll have the photograph of the finished project. But it's just something nice to sort of keep in your file. Um, and obviously, if you have a bakery shop or whatever, it's something to hang on the wall. And uh, so as I said, we've done that. So Christine today. So thank you, Christine. And, um, and then on Monday, um, this is going to be Monday's lesson. Um, so we are going to be doing the hibiscus, all right? So you're going to do the, the hibiscus here. And you can see hibiscus is really a beautiful uh, flower. And I'm going to be showing the hibiscus in this sort of coral color. And uh, so on Monday, I'm going to be showing you how to do this, all right? Um, so I will go on um, about 15 minutes before, like I normally do at about 1.45 or 6.45 on Monday. Now, we uh, in the UK, Monday is a bank holiday. It's also Memorial Day here, which is basically a holiday as well. Uh, but I will uh, be as I come on about 1.45. And um, so, uh, but I realize, you know, some of you might be off at the beach if you're in the US and things because now some of the areas the beaches are now open so but um, but um, so on Monday I'm going to be at one about 1:45 or 5:40 uh, 6:45 kind of talk a little bit about what we're up to and what things are happening this week and whatever next week but um, I'll be
showing you the hibiscus, so I'll be showing you the petals. So this is made with like a 90 millimeter uh, blossom, uh, the blossom cutter, uh, sorry, the largest blossom cutter, the 110 millimeter, so the biggest size blossom cutter. And then um, we have uh, here, I've used the peony to vein the petals with. We've made the center. Um, the bud is made in a small cone mold. Um, I've used the um, cherry blossom for the calyx. I've used the daisy from the sunflower and I've used a small sunflower leaf. Uh, for the leaves. So this is just showing you how you can take some of the other, um, you know, some of your Flower Pro. And I realize some of you, of course, uh, just started with Flower Pro, so naturally you're not going to be able to invest in everything at one time. Um, but the thing is, is that when you get those uh, products, you'll be able to um, obviously create the beautiful hibiscus. And as I talk about in the class on Monday, these come in fabulous colors. So this is a really fun for like a summer birthday cake or an anniversary cake. You could use this um, in a golden yellow on a 50th wedding anniversary for the summer. Uh, you could do it in red for a 40th wedding anniversary rather than traditional roses. Um, and of course, these are both made in sugar, but of course this would look fabulous in air drying clay. And if you have a hibiscus plant at home, a lot of you may have hibiscus, um, especially in the UK, um, where you sometimes dry rose flowers like that in the kitchen, say on the windowsill, and it's not flowering, you know, you can make up a couple of air drying clay flower ones and then you just pop those on a bamboo skewer, stick them in the flower pot, and then you'll have a hibiscus that's in bloom all the year round. But um, a very nice flower and obviously brings a little bit of uh, summer fun and tropics into, uh, as I said, uh, everybody's home. And uh, so that will be on Monday. And uh, you'll see how I talk about the stamens. So, you know, some of you may have stamens, some may not. So again, that's something I realized that in some areas you still have things that are difficult to get hold of. But, you know, when things get back to normality or some sort of normality, you'll be able to uh, buy some stamens if you don't have any. But also remember, it's all about being resourceful. Um, like one of the competitors in the uh, citrusy fund, you know, she didn't have like, for example, the filler flower mold. So she may do with what she had. And that's really what this is all about as well. And also, you know, sharing that information with members, because sometimes it's good to share. I did this, but I used this because I didn't have this. And sort of like it gives everybody idea. This is all about learning, caring and sharing and obviously uh, sharing those things with each other and uh, obviously trying to uh, to uh, just sort of get the best out of obviously your molds and uh, what you do. Uh, with flour, with paste, or with air drying clay. Okay. So anyway, so I hope uh, everybody's uh, enjoyed the the class, the second part of the class. Now remember, next month we do have um, a sweet pea. All right, it's the beginning of June. We do have a sweet pea. Well, in June we do have the sweet peas. So actually, it's in like three weeks' time, I think it is. We do have the sweet pea. Um, uh, online one. So that's a virtual class. So that will be on a Monday and Thursday. So Christine will be obviously. Um, it's going to be, uh, we'll be doing the handouts for that and then the supply list of what you need. And the Sweet Pea actually uses a little, uh, what I call a pedal converter, which I'll explain about in one of the upcoming lives. But it's like a template, but you want to make that in some fun foam or in some uh, thick card. So it actually will go into the poppy mold and that will actually convert your poppy mold into a Sweet Pea mold. Um, so it's just a sort of another way of showing you how you can use some of your products. But um, so that's going to be a fun one. And uh, so uh, just looking for the comment where the sweet peas are because I had them the other day. Um, I'm not sure whether I did have the sweet peas out. We've got so many flowers in here in my studio. But anyway, I, sh I showed the sweet peas the other day, but obviously, uh, oh, Scott's just going to get them for me. Here we go. So the sweet pea, if you missed it on Monday, you know, this is the, the sweet peas. And um, thank you. And remember, the sweet peas. All right, so this is the sweet pea we'll be doing, as I said, in a couple of weeks' time, all right? And uh, remember, these ones are air drying clay, these are sugar. And so there, what I actually did is I used gel colors to color the air drying clay and the sugar. I used the pink, so that's why the color is identical. So I used the same color gel to color the air drying clay and the sugar, and the same color to color the leaves and things. And uh, so that, that sort of, uh, but you can see how they look almost identical. Okay, so, so you can do the air drying clay ones, which obviously the only reason I can tell the difference is because of the weight of them. So you can do your sweet pea project again, just like on this one, there uh, will be, as I said, um, a uh, supply list and it will have how many grams of paste or air drying clay and then the colors and all the wires. So, you know, you can get that all together. But sweet peas are a beautiful flower uh, to use in combination with roses and other flowers like that. 
But uh, so anyway, so have, have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Um, and as I said, I look forward to uh, catching up with everybody on Monday. And then you'll be able to obviously watch the hibiscus on Monday. But if you're busy Monday being a bank holiday, um, obviously next week you can watch that. We also have next week is all sort of tropical theme. And Chrissy Boone, who is uh, one of our uh, design team ambassadors from the Flower Pro design team in Canada. So Chrissy lives as a company called Ice and Inspiration and Too Nice to Slice in uh, out in uh, just outside of Toronto, out towards Niagara Falls. And Chrissy is going to be sharing some sort of tropical foliage with you. And so that ties in really nicely with the hibiscus. But remember also the hibiscus, you could add things like the jasmine from the filiflower. Um, you could add, uh, you know, bovardia. You could do the little baby plumeria. So there's many, many different flowers. And in upcoming weeks and months, you know, of course, I will be doing other tropical flowers as well. And uh, so obviously this is not the only time we'll be doing tropical flowers, but we'll be adding extra, extra flowers to that as well. All right, so have a great weekend, everybody. See you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.